This video will introduce the displacement processes that we see in imbibition and introduce the concept of trapping. Previous video did primary drainage. That was phase two displacing phase one. Imbibition is the reverse, one displacing two. So let's um, write the word down. And this is phase one displacing phase two. And we're assuming that phase one is the wetting phase and phase two is non-wetting. Here, this is gonna be controlled by a contact angle, which is phase one advancing. So it's gonna be theta A. And we're assuming, as I said, that this is less than 90 degrees. The word used here is imbibition. It's a rather strange word used ironically for people like me who's imbibing a pint of beer in the pub. Um, but it does have a strict meaning in flowing porous media. Okay, so imbibition is the wetting phase displacing the non-wetting phase in the pore space. In primary drainage, I mentioned primary. Imbibition here is not a primary process because it occurs after primary drainage. So water is still present in the pore spaces in the corners and roughness. Primary imbibition is in fact where the wetting phase enters a porous medium that's completely dry. That's quite a complex process because you have to form these wetting layers. So what I'm going to be describing today is imbibition, but this will be a secondary process. Um, the reason why it's secondary is to begin with, primarily, in the first place, the porous medium here was completely saturated with the wetting phase. Okay, so it's the second time the wetting phase goes into the porous medium. Okay, so we're going to um, draw our example porous medium again. And I'm showing it in green here because I'm going to assume now that Okay, that the pore space, in terms of the centres of the pore space, have been filled with phase two. So we've done, we've injected phase two, we've done primary drainage, we've filled basically most of the pores and throats. Okay, we fill most of the pores and throats, and we're left with the wetting phase just squeezed into the corners. Okay, so we're going to do the same in terms of pillory pressure. Okay. But now I'm going to do it this way round. Okay. We've got PC is going to be very high to begin with. So PC is P2 minus P1. And we start with a high value at the end of primary drainage. Then what we're going to do is we have phase two is at a high pressure. Phase one is is at a lower pressure and we increase the pressure in phase one so that the capillary pressure goes down. We are decreasing capillary pressure and in fact it's the process with the highest capillary pressure that is most favoured. Okay, so how does this process work? Well you might say well it's the same, I inject here and it's, it's the reverse because it's a wetting phase, it lights the narrow region, so we fill, say, a throat here, and maybe here. But what about the pores? Now, we immediately hit the pores. It's very unfavourable to go through the, the pores, and we'll discuss later. It's really unfavourable to go through the pores like this, so we seem to be stuck. But imagine we have here quite a narrow throat. What does that look like in cross-section? So let's draw it here. So this one in cross-section. Well, to begin with, we've introduced a very high capillary pressure to begin with, tiny radius of curvature. It looks like this. This is my phase one, and my phase two here is in the middle. Now what happens, okay, 
I begin to drop the capillary pressure. I might feel a few narrow throats at the inlet. But as I drop the capillary pressure, what happens here? Well, the water is connected in these wetting layers. So as I drop the capillary pressure, we see the reverse process of what we had in primary drainage is that the wetting phase moves out from the corners. Now this is possible, okay, if there's a strong wettability change and phase one is no longer wetting, this is going to be more difficult. But we're assuming that phase one is remaining the wetting phase even when we're looking at advancing angles. So these layers swell. To fill this pore, as I'm going to show in the next video, we actually almost need a negative capillary pressure. So the capillary pressure is going to keep going down and down and down, and these layers are going to swell and swell and swell. What happens? Let's have a look. The layers continue to swell like this, and like this, and like this. So now we begin to fill more with water. But there comes a critical point, and the critical point is, in fact, where the contact of the wetting phase with the solid, these two contacts meet. Because imagine we get to this point. And now I'm going to inject some more of phase one. Well, how do I draw it? Uh, sort of does this, but now just man, the curvature, the curvature hasn't decreased, it's gone up. I've sort of got this, this has got a small radius of curvature, it's more curved. But from the young Laplace equation, that doesn't make sense. I mean, that, 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 that means I'm sort of up here, and that would force the wetting phase, phase one, to rush into the pore space. And in fact, that's exactly what happens. This is an unstable configuration. And within a milli, if not a microsecond, we haven't actually seen the dynamics of the process. We go from a meniscus that's very, very slowly, 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 slowly swelling and the speed of flow in porous media is extremely slow, often just a few centimetres a day. So very, 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 very slowly swelling. And then we get to this critical point and snap! The centre fills with the wetting phase. And yes, what's the process called? It's called snap off. So this is a process called snap off. And what it does is it will fill first the narrowest throat because you might say well whoa, 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 why well imagine i have another throat that's bigger okay another bigger throat here with the same curvature as i've drawn here all right that's the same curvature so it's the same capillary pressure this is phase one in this say wider throat which i'll indicate here we still have phase two in the center. So this narrow throat snaps off first. Okay, that's fine. And um, what's next? Well, the capillary pressure keeps dropping, okay, and dropping, and it's gonna fill the next narrow throat, say here. And then it's gonna fill the next narrow throat, here, say. And then maybe this one. Obviously, I haven't drawn this very carefully, so maybe people think it may be this one that we next. Okay, there will be a next one. Okay, so it fills basically just in order of size. Right. So this is essentially spatially random. If we have a statistically locally heterogeneous rock, but which over some scales is the same type of heterogeneous, if we just have a sort of random distribution of throat radius, you're filling a throat here, then here, then here. Now you're doing it in order of size, it isn't a quote random order, but the spatial distribution of throats of a different size is more or less statistically random. So this is another random filling process in reverse. We fill the throats in reverse order of size. So we fill the smallest ones first, then the biggest ones. Why do we fill the smallest ones first? Because at the wetting phase, it lacks the surface. It wants to be in the little regions, right? The non-wetting phase wants to be in the big region. So this is a random filling process. It's in order of size. And uh, just as we had invasion percolation, this 
is also a percolation process. And basically you fill the smallest threat. Basically, that's the process. You feel the smallest threat. Okay, I filled it. What do I do next? Will you feel the next smallest threat? Right. Okay, I've done that. What do I do next? The next smallest threat. So it's a percolation process. And again, I'll describe that in more detail later, but it's a percolation process. You might say, but, but before you had an invasion percolation, now you just percolation. Yes, you're right. This is actually, if you want to be, if you need a qualifier, it's ordinary percolation. And the reason why it's ordinary percolation is I can fill anywhere in the pore space. Why? Because the water is connected through the wetting layers. I can fill here at random because the water goes all the way from the inlet through the wetting layers, across here, through the wetting layers, through the wetting layers, and fills here. And that's different from invasion percolation in primary drainage where the non-wetting phase has to be connected to the inlet. I can't get gas or oil suddenly to go ping in the middle of the pore space, right? That, that, that's a magic process. This is not magic. This is flow through the wetting layers. So inhibition can be described by a physicist as percolation, if you want to qualify as ordinary percolation, and you're filling basically always the smallest threat. Okay. Um, this has two interesting consequences. The first one is, okay, so I keep doing this, but hang on, what happens, so I do this, and I do this, and now I want to fill here, but just a moment, an invasion percolation, I could just keep filling and filling and filling and filling and filling, and I said, well, the water escapes through the wetting layers. And now let's look here. Let's look at this here and here. And I just highlighted it so we can have a look at it. Imagine the next narrowest throat is this one. But hang on, how does the non-wetting phase, the gas or the oil escape? It doesn't have wetting layers. It's in the center of the pore space. It's surrounded by water. Um, it can't, it's trapped. So what this leads to is trapping. This region of the pore space is trapped. Okay, trapped in the pore space here. Cannot move, it cannot escape. So in fact, well, end of displacement. Okay. Okay, so we keep going. You can see this pore is trapped. Let's say we fill here. All right. And this pool is trapped. Now, if we keep going here, you see that if we just fill these throats, now the throat was just a surface, but actually what happens is you fill the throat surface and then the menisci move out sort of somewhere midway. So there is a finite volume that the wetting phase occupies to reach a new position of equilibrium with some curvature on either side. But you can see quite readily that if we just have snap off, We'd never fill the centers of any of the pores, and we have a considerable amount of trapping. So this would imply that if we inject a wetting phase to displace a non-wetting phase, the vast majority of the non-wetting phase appears to get trapped. When I'm going to show in the next video, this isn't necessarily the case. There is a subtlety. But snap-off does lead to trapping. The mechanism by which a non-wetting phase gets trapped in the pore space is snap off. And this is very, very significant. So in oil field, you invest billions of dollars, you drill lots of wells, you pump in water at high pressure, you leave more than half the oil behind. The principal reason is at the small scale, snap off has trapped oil in the pore space, it's not moving. When you inject CO2 in the subsurface, you may be concerned that that CO2 continues to move and escapes eventually, but as it moves, it gets displaced by water and the CO2 gets trapped in the pore space. And if you were to spend billions of dollars trying to get the CO2 out, I can tell you, you wouldn't. You'd leave half behind, but of course you're not doing that. You want it to remain behind. So as the CO2 migrates, in fact, it can all get trapped. So it's a very significant problem in the sense of a very significant phenomenon. It's a problem if you want to recover oil. It's good news for you if you want to sequester CO2.
Now the last thing is, what is the capillary pressure for the snap-off process? So let's draw a triangle and imagine for the sake of argument that the contact angle is zero, completely wetting. And then I think you can see that the critical moment is when, whoops, that's a terrible circle, isn't it? The critical moment is when I can draw a circle in the pore space. This is a contact angle of zero. Okay, this is the wetting phase. And the critical point is when I can draw the largest circle. And this is defined as the radius of the threat. So the radius of curvature is RT. But now, if we go back to the general form of the young Laplace equation, PC is sigma, 1 over 1 radius of curvature, which is clearly the radius of the throat, plus 1 over the radius of curvature out of the plane of the board. Now, when we described sort of what's called a piston-like process in primary drainage, Phase two displaces phase one, and the meniscus is curved in two directions. And it's more or less an equal, equal curvature on both sides, and that's a two sigma over radius. In snap-off, it's curved in this direction, but out of the plane of the ball. What is the curvature? Well, you could assume maybe it's zero because it's sort of straight and then it goes out. But if it goes out like this, that's actually a negative value here. It's certainly not a positive. So most treatments, sort of just to get a number, we assume that this is zero, that the radius out of the plane of the board is, the rad radius is much larger, one over the radius is a lot smaller. In reality, because this is a throat and you have to go into a pore, it actually has to be negative. It's going the other way. So PC roughly is just sigma over the throat radius. Now, in general, if you have any angular material with a half angle alpha and a finite contact angle, so a finite contact angle, which we'll call theta here, okay, then the capillary pressure can be derived, and I'm not going to derive it in this video. You can try and go through it yourself draw a really big clear diagram is my tip but pc can be shown to be it's the sigma divided by the throat radius there is no two here this is going to turn out to be very significant there is no two because there's only curvature in one direction it's the layer swelling it's not pushing out like this it's swelling okay there's a cos theta as you might expect and then there's also terms to do with both the contact angle and alpha which is this half angle of the corner so this is tan alpha so you've got cos theta one minus tan theta tan alpha what that means is that snap off has a capillary pressure that is half a piston like advance there's no two here and then there's another negative term which is actually is that as the angle becomes larger, as it get, opens up in the corners, and as the contact angle increases, there's another negative term plus this negative term with the curvature. So snap-off does occur. It does lead to trapping. That is significant. But the capillary pressures of which it occurs, unless you have really a wetting phase and really sharp corners, is really very low. So the question may be, well, isn't there another process that could occur? Isn't there something that is piston-like? And of course, that has to come from the inlet, which means it has to go through the pores. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how we fill the pores and how that relates to this.